I know I know Coach Herman was uh, pleased with with the work that got done on the on the bye week on the off time. How did you see your unit improve during that time? Well, it, it depends on what um, you know the focus was. There, there were a few objectives that we wanted to get done in a bye week, and first and foremost, we needed to get healthy. We needed to give some some players uh, an opportunity to rest and recover. Uh, we were pretty banged up in certain positions after uh, our last game. Uh, so we needed to do that. We got some younger players or some uh, less experienced players, some good reps uh, where we, we feel like um, if we get into a situation where we're, we're decimated with injuries that we can rely on some other players, whether it be on special teams or defense. Uh, we spent a lot of time defensively just uh, on self-scout. And we got a lot of uh, good work done on that. Um, and uh, so I think we, we had a combination of things. Rest, I think we improved on uh, – some situational things that we did in practice. And uh, we, I, I thought we've got a lot of work done uh, on our self scout throughout the week too. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, actually, Chris, you, you just mentioned what I wanted to ask you. I mean, um, but were, th were there any specific things like when you thought to yourself, I want to get better at this during the uh, week? all of it. I mean, I, you know, we, we've lost our last two games and, uh, you know, we, we, we evaluated everything. We, you know, we, we evaluated uh, explosive plays, runs and passes. We uh, evaluated, you know, first and second down calls. Uh, we evaluated uh, situational stuff with third down, uh, red zone, goal line. Uh, we looked at all, uh, all of those things and just finding ways that we could, uh, whether it's an alignment, uh, it's a technique, it's a call, uh, an adjustment to a call, you know, anything uh, that we could, you know, try to evaluate that would help us get better, help our players get better. We looked at all of it. Chip, go ahead. Chris, um, how have your guys done getting off blocks? Um, I think we've, we've done pretty well at, at certain positions. Uh, there are two um, in particular that we need to improve at, and uh, uh, really it's at linebacker, uh, our outside linebackers in particular out on the perimeter. Um, you know, Chris uh, Adamora and uh, DeMarvion Overshawn are both, you know, former safeties. Um, and depending on, you know, who's in the slot and who's, who's blocking them, you know, sometimes that can be, you know, difficult just because of our size. We're not linebackers there. And uh, we, we need to get a little bit better at being able to get off blocks and set the edge uh, on the perimeter. Uh, I think defensive line-wise, we're doing a pretty good job of using our hands and getting off blocks. Uh, and I think in the secondary right now, we're doing a pretty good job of leveraging the ball and keeping the ball inside and in front and, and allowing our pursuit to get there. So, if I, I were to, to say what positions could we get better at, I would say our two, you know, outside linebacker positions are they're difficult where they're used in the fit and they've got to leverage, you know, certain plays. And um, that, that's an area that we could improve on. Kirk, you're up. Yeah, Chris, uh, with Larry Fedora having been here as an offensive analyst last year, does uh, that suggest any kind of advantages for Larry knowing how Tom thinks and what he likes to do? And what do you think Fedora likes to stress in his offenses? Well, I, I think, no, I don't, I don't think there's a real advantage. You know, um, I, I've, I've been in this situation, um, you know, before, uh, just specifically when I, I left Ohio State and I went to Rutgers, you know, I, I, uh, we went and played Ohio State and, and knew uh, quite a bit about the program and the way, you know, certain people thought and, and what they like to do, but it still comes down to players. You know, uh, players have to go play, players have to go execute, and that, that's where the game is won and lost. It's on the field with your players. So, um, Knowing you know this or or that about a program, um, I, I you know maybe there's there some small advantages, but at the end of the day, the players have to go play. So, um, you know, I'm looking at, at Baylor's offense uh, specifically. Um, you know, we we've gone back and studied a lot of things uh, from Coach Fedora's past uh, that they may not have done yet uh, at Baylor, and uh, he's got a lot of difficult concepts that they used uh, at North Carolina. That, that uh, you know a lot of different ways to attack you. Uh, they want to run the football. Um, you know, they want to be physical at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they like running the quarterback. Uh, they have certain concepts that uh, they like in the pass game. But I think overall, they, they have, you know, a pretty diverse package, uh, different personnel groupings, a lot of different formations, and a lot of different ways that they can attack you and make you defend, uh, you know, from sideline to sideline. Joe, go ahead. Coach, um, Tom Herman and Dave Aranda have a really close friendship from their time at Cal Lutheran and now. They'll be going against each other this weekend. I was wondering if, if you've ever gone against like a close personal friend, uh, been on the opposite sideline of them, and what that experience was like. Um, yeah, I, I, I have, um, you know, a, a few times. And um, 
you know, I, I, Dave's a, a really good friend uh, of mine as well. I've known Dave for a long time, and uh, we, we've talked bo- football over the years, um, you know, a lot, and uh, got a lot of respect for Dave uh, and others on that staff. But, you know, uh, it, it's it's no different than, um, you know, like anybody else in this profession. We all have a lot of friends in this profession because most of us have worked at a lot of different places with a lot of different people, and our, our paths cross on game day a lot. Um, and uh, when it gets to game day and the foot hits the ball, there are no friendships anymore. You know, we're, we're, we're all getting paid to do a job, and it's to win. Um, and uh, that, that's what we have to do. And uh, when the game's over, uh, guys can go back to being friends again. But, you know, when, when that foot hits the ball, man, it's, it's, a, it's war, it's a battle, and, and uh, we want to go win. Anwar, you're up. Uh, hey, Coach, good morning. Um, you know, as a, as a new coach here with, with new staff members, but you guys have struggled over the past couple of games, how do you – make sure that the players don't lose faith in what you're teaching or, or your messages to them? And uh, do you have to do anything extra just to make sure that, uh, you know, all those guys still stay, you know, along with you? Yeah, I mean, our players are all bought in. Uh, there's no issues there. Uh, they watch the film. Uh, they, they see uh, how close we are. They, they see the mistakes that uh, have been made um, on game day that have prevented us from uh, winning. And, um, you know, there's some things we got to get cleaned up. There's, there's no secret about it in all three phases. We've had too many mistakes that have cost us, you know, the last uh, two games. Uh, we feel like the, the, those were winnable games and we didn't win them. Um, can I go back to uh, old Bill Belichick saying more games are lost than they are won? And, and uh, we, we lost two games with mistakes. And uh, they see it, we see it, and we're working like heck to get it cleaned up. And uh, if we get some of them cleaned up, you know, the, the, the results will change. So they're highly motivated. Um, they come to work to be uh, coached every single day. Uh, they still have a, a lot of fun coming to the complex. Uh, we go practices. Our practices have been uh, spirited. They've been competitive. There's been great energy. Uh, there's been no signs of, of guys not being bought in, locked in, and still highly motivated to go out. Every goal that, you know, we want uh, in terms of uh, – being our best and, and having a chance to to win the league, all those things are still out there. We, you know, we just got to control. We can control and play our best football and play clean, play consistent, uh, and let the rest take care of itself. And we haven't done that yet. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, uh, you've had uh, four games with Demarvian now. I'm just kind of curious how how you think he's he's handled the transition to linebacker, and what are what are some areas you think that he's still really kind of trying to learn? You know, where where areas that he can really improve over the course of the year. Yeah, I love Demo. Um, he's working really, really hard. Uh, it's not an easy transition. Um, there's a lot of things he's got to get better at. Uh, going uh, from, from safety uh, to being in the box and playing linebacker, things happen so much faster. The reads are different. You're so much closer to the ball and, and, and to blockers. Um, you know, a lot of linebackers, that's all they've been playing over their career. They've done it for multiple years, and they're trained, and they just react faster. Demo's not a trained linebacker. And – uh, he keeps getting a little bit better every week. Um, he handles th- things a little bit better. Uh, he reads things a little bit better, reacts faster a little bit better, using his hands a little bit better. Um, but uh, it, it, it's not an easy transition. We knew he wasn't going to be a finished product by, by game three or game four. You know, it's going to be a long process with him. And uh, he's just got to stay positive, stay confident, keep working. And that's exactly what he's done. And he's gotten better. But, you know, I mentioned earlier, talk, you know, I was asked a question about how, how do I feel we're getting off blocks? That's an area that, you know, a DB uh, moving a linebacker, it's, it's a completely different world. And, and being able to take on blocks uh, and get off blocks is different there in the box than it is out in space. So those are some things that he has to continue to work on. But uh, I love his attitude. Um, I love his coachability. And the guy's going to be a special player. And he, he's making plays. And he's going to continue to improve as we go forward. Danny, go ahead. Chris, is it fair to blame some of these struggles um, on what this offseason was and losing spring ball. And secondly, at this point, do you guys feel that you've made up for what you lost um, with the loss of spring football and the, kind of the, just the weird off season? Well, just in my opinion, um, you know, when you lose a game, uh, it's easy to blame. Um, it, it's easy to blame uh, the, 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 the virus issue and the lost time. It's easy to blame this, this or that, you know, and um, I, I take the stance, you know, we lost the game. Let's evaluate why we lost the game. And let's get better at it. There's no blame, you know, it, everybody's gone through the same thing. So, um, you know, it's just how you handle it and, and uh, it is what it is. So, no, I, I don't blame, um, you know, any uh, mistakes that we've had out there on uh, lost practice time. Have we made up for all of it? No, we haven't. You know, it's a, 
a long process to, to make up for all that lost time that we lost in, in the spring. But uh, there are no excuses. There's no blame game. Uh, there are some things we've got to get better at, and uh, that's what we're working uh, really hard to, to do. We've got four last questions in queue. Or we can get through those, uh, starting with Jake. Uh, yeah, Chris, how similar is Charlie Brewer's game to Sam's game and what's going to be most important in, in defending Charlie? No, I think there's a lot of similarities, uh, both very competitive players, both can throw it exceptionally well, both can run it they can beat you with their feet. So I think there's a lot of comparisons between the two. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're going to have to play a great game against them. You know, we're going to have to uh, be great in coverage. We're going to have to do a great job with our rush and not let him get out. And we're going to have to be able to stop the quarterback run game. You know, a player like this can beat you in, in, uh, with all those things, whether it's his arm, uh, whether it's designed quarterback runs, whether it's scramble, you know, on, on drop back passes, it's, which is one of the toughest things to defend in, in college football. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to have to be at our best. Chris, you're up. Chris, with with back to back losses and then going into a bye, not being able to kind of work through things on the field against another opponent um, and with some of the struggles of the defense, what's the mindset coming into – another game um, finally after having to sit on those two losses for an extra week without being able to try and get, get that bad taste out of your mouth. No, we just, we got to work. I mean, there's, there, there is a lot of, there were a lot of things that we've done well in the last two games and in the, this last game, you know, in particular, there were a lot of things that we did well. We got three takeaways, you know, uh, uh, we gave up too many yards rushing, but when I look at the 55 yards uh, or 55 rushing attempts, at 3.8 yards per attempt, we'd like to be about, you know, three and a half uh, or three, you know, so we weren't far off from that number. Uh, there were a lot of things that we did well. We, we, we lost our, our, our uh, uh, sting at the end in, in overtime and, and didn't close it uh, when we had an opportunity to close it. But uh, we're just trying to build on the positive, guys. We're, we're trying to identify what we're doing well, you know, what mistakes that we've made. Are, are there any uh, things consistently uh, that we've done wrong and, and get them cleaned up, and get them fixed. And, um, so, you know, whether it's go play another game or, or go in a bye week, the only thing we can do is we can continue to coach, continue to, uh, to teach, continue to go practice and continue to, to work. Uh, and that's what we've done regardless of the situation. So, um, whether we played another game or we had a bye week, that's, that's the way we are going to have to attack it. And that's the way the players have attacked it. And, uh, I really, uh, really appreciate uh, our players, their mindset, um, you know, where they're at right now, um, their hunger. Uh, to continue to be coached and go improve. And, and uh, it's really been a lot of fun to be around. Two last ones. Start with Marcus. Yeah, Chris, um, Coach Herman has talked about how the defense has, has improved a lot since the game against Texas Tech. What specific things do you think the defense as a whole has improved on since that first Big 12 game? Well, I mean, we, we've played four games. Um, and I know there were a lot of conversations about tackling. In our four games, we had one really bad game of tackling. Um, that's what it was at Texas Tech. We, we didn't tackle very well, and we gave up some. We, we allowed some explosive plays because we didn't tackle well in space. Um, in the other three games, I think we've, we've tackled pretty darn well. Um, and uh, there's never been a game where anybody's made every tackle. We haven't made every tackle, but we made a lot of them, and we made a lot of them out in space in one-on-one situations. So uh, if you're, you're specifically talking about issues from the Texas Tech game, that was uh, the biggest issue in that game is we let short, quick passes turn into explosive plays because one or multiple guys miss tackles. Uh, that has not been the case uh, in the other games, and uh, we need to continue to do that. Last one. Go ahead, Chip. Chris, um, can you talk a little bit more about uh, Adam Mora's, you know, adjustment to spur and where he's, you know, how he's growing, what, what uh, areas he needs to – to pick it up and and do you have a bad cop on your defense a guy who you know is gonna get vocal and and you know calling out other guys when they're making mistakes or unforced errors uh we'll, we'll answer the question specifically about uh, adam mora um very similar to what i mentioned about uh the marvion um you know he's coming from the the, the back end position to to be a basic every down player uh, whether you want to call him a nickel or a hybrid linebacker, whatever you want to call him, uh, there's a lot on his plate to play out in space to play some man. And um, based on formation, he could end up in the box based on, you know, the style of, of offense and the personnel grouping that they have out there. Um, is he ready for all of that? Uh, no, he's just not built for all of that. But that's what we have. You know, guys, we, I mean, that's what we have. We don't have anybody else. You know, the, the, those are the bodies that we're playing with. 
Uh, he's getting better just like Demo is in a lot of areas. Um, it talked about specifically, uh, again, going back to the question about getting off blocks. You know, he has to continue to improve that part of his game. Um, and uh, he has to continue to improve his reads and reactions, you know, to what his keys are telling him so he can react faster. And uh, he gets a little bit better at some things every week. Uh, and he'll continue to do that the more reps and the more consistently we, uh, you know, the more consistent we are on defense with him. Uh, they'll both get better. But a lot of similarities between him and Demo uh, with a lot of, uh, of similarities in the issues or struggles that they've had uh, as well. They both have made plays. Uh, they both have uh, things that they need to clean up. Speaking of, you know, your, your, your bad cop question, uh, I'd like to call it leadership more than bad cop. Um, we do have some really good leadership, you know, on defense um, in all three levels. So, uh, you know, up front, Joseph Osai and uh, TQ have done a great job uh, of leading um, that defensive line and, and the defense overall. Uh, on the back end, Chris Brown and Caden Stearns have, and Josh Thompson's been a great leader. Um, you know, linebacker right now, uh, they're younger, uh, more inexperienced players. And typically your best leaders are probably your older players uh, that have been around. And, and uh, those four guys have been around and people respect them and they listen to them. And uh, they've been trying to do a, a really good job of keeping other people uh, accountable, um, you know, to, to do what they need to do on and off the field. Coach Tom and, and, and Dave and Randover at Baylor have a pretty close personal relationship. And I was wondering if whether it was at Shippensburg, Oklahoma State, Ohio State, whether you've gone up uh, on the opposite sidelines against one of your close personal friends and, and what that experience was like. Um, I'd have to think about that. Um, well, not really. Uh, nobody, nobody too close. I don't know what the relationship is to be quite honest with you, but I, I don't think I've had any, uh, any, um, you know, really tight friendships um, going against one another. Dennis, you're up. Coach, um, Coach Herman talked about the improvement he saw when he was able to get the ones on ones, twos on twos, that sort of thing. Where did you see the most improvement with your unit because of the, the work you got done on the bye? Uh, regarding this week? Yeah, um, I think, um, you know, first and second down, um, making sure that we're staying on schedule, making sure that all of our pass protections uh, identification wise, uh, making sure that we are sound um, with with regard to uh, being balanced, pass and run, um, has been a very important stressing point um, for us heading in, you know, to the bye week, and then you know now it's game week, and it really has been the same of making sure that we are um, being effective both on the ground and in the air, and assignment sound and fundamentally sound. So that's been a, a, a big point of emphasis, and our guys have done a very good job of uh, execution in these past two weeks. Chris, go ahead. Mike, um, I don't know if you saw the same thing or if it's my untrained eye, but it seemed like Sam was struggling some with, with deep balls against OU, uh, didn't have a whole bunch of long completions through the air. Is that something that you're seeing? Is, and, and just with him in general, he obviously you know, put the team on his back on offense and, and, and led that comeback. Um, what are you seeing from him through, through four games? And uh, is – was my assessment right that he was maybe struggling with with some of the deep balls against OU? Um, the the deep balls are a product of a lot of different things. Um, on the first particular deep ball, um, there was pocket pressure. Um, just there was not a lot of room for him to step up. Um, however, at the same time, you've got to make short stride throws. Um, so. Uh, the timing of the receivers and separation factors into it as well. But we're continually working on a deep ball, his fundamentals, um, the trajectory of the ball, and the timing. Um, the footwork is something that's a work in progress, and we're going to continue to work on those things. So everybody, you know, that's all shared uh, there as, as far as being effective, throwing the ball vertically down the field. Um, and, it, and it falls on my shoulders, too, to be in the right play at the right time, you don't want to be throwing deep balls against cover two. Um, but, you know, we felt uh, we felt that there's a room to grow there and that has been a stress point for us and we'll continue to stress it because you've got to, you've got to be able to attack vertically. Um, but overall, um, too much inconsistency um, at that position, at the quarterback position right now. Um, we will, you know, it's never perfect and we're never happy with it. 
Um, you can look at certain statistics and think that we're, we're pretty good, but we know that there's room to improve. So we have to continue to make strides and focus on the things that we can control, which is our ability to um, read the defense and go through our progressions, get in and out of plays and, and, and making sure that we're delivering the ball and, and we're assignment sound at that position. And, and we have to continue to, to work to, to be better. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, how much is it uh, hurting things, if, if at all, the fact that uh, Jordan and Jake you know, can't stay healthy, you know, what, what does that do to the plays that y'all want to run and the flow that you want to use uh, in, in the offense? Injuries are part of the game and they're never an excuse. And so we're not going to make any. We have to adapt to the personnel that we have. And, and that's the bottom line. So I can, Brian, I can sit here and make up all the excuses in the world, two guys in the same position, blah, blah, blah. We, we got to overcome, we got to adapt um, and find ways to be effective, period. Chip, you're up. Mike, um, Sam <clears throat> has been such a big part of the running game uh, this season. How much of that is by design? How much of it is him um, just making a play? Well, a lot of it came in the last game on scrambles later in the game when we were behind and had to move the ball and drop an eight. And there's only three defensive rushers. So that's, you know, three gaps occupied and you're creating five gaps. So a lot of times, you know, those escape hatches will occur. The more they drop eight, the more those will occur. Um, but there's been some, a lot of significant gains on quarterback design runs. So with a quarterback like Sam, you want to play to his strengths. You got to have some quarterback run. Um, you know, it evens the numbers out. Um, he likes it. He's a competitor. Um, we have to be careful with it. You'd have to have a, um, you know, pitch count on that thing um, with the amount of runs that you are giving him. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to play to your personnel strengths. But a lot of them were created last week. And as far as the third quarter, is there any similarity that you're seeing where things, you know, tend to bog down a little bit in the third quarter? What, what needs to happen there? Self-inflicted wounds is a common theme there, whether it be a penalty here, a penalty there, or a missed assignment. Um, you know, we, we've got to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no missed assignments and the things that we can control, which are penalties and, uh, you know, execution. And, uh, you know, that's, that falls all on me. You know, I'm to blame. So, you know, we got to drill it. We got to, um, you know, just make sure that we're, we're crossing all of our T's and dotting our I's. Yeah, I kind of bit more, not too many receivers, but the rotation is that, do you, do you sometimes need to shorten your rotation like basketball coaches shorten their bits? Yes, sir. In our situation, no. Um, but in some situations, if they're fresh and if you have, um, you know, different tiers um, and enough depth to where they are, um, fresh, then you want to try to keep um, the quarterback happy if they have, you know, the, a battery going, you know, a rhythm. And if they know one another, if they're on the same page and you have to know what plays, you know, for what receivers you want in. And there's a little bit of that that goes on as well. So you have to know your, your unit and um, <clears throat> your receivers coach, which Andre does a great job of making sure that we're on the same page and substituting guys in and out. Um, so, you know, the rhythm, the rhythm and, and the timing are the, are the biggest things. And every, every receiver is just a little bit different in every quarterback and their relationship to those receivers is a little bit different. So it can become, uh, you know, it's one of those, it's, it's those are the little nuances and that's the, that's a fun part of, of matching up your personnel and having discussions and, and meetings and, and drill work, you know, a lot of it's, individual time routes on air you know that's where that comes into play and that's one of my favorite periods of the day because it, you're really just working on the timing you're not worried about defense you're not worried about you know route conversions you're worried about pitching and catching and timing and and making it click and, and getting in a rhythm danny go ahead mike i was wondering if you feel at this point that you guys have made up for the time that you guys lost with no spring football and kind of the odd off season um, as far as like install and getting to know each other and the players getting to know, feel comfortable with what you guys want to do. 
I think with the relationship part of it, I think we've done a good job, uh, you know, communicating and getting to know one another. I, I don't know how you make up for, for lost time. That's a tough one. You know, how, how can you measure that one? And two, time is the one thing that you can never get back, you know? And, and so, you know, I'm not trying to make any excuses for anything, but I think we're all on the same page. It's an even playing field, you know, uh, for the most part, some guys had a little bit more springs than others, and some staffs were, were were together in previous years. So, you know, maybe there's a difference there. But, you know, excuses aside, <clears throat> how do you make up for for lost time? I don't I don't know. And to to you know to ask to answer your question, how do you how do you even go about measuring that? I have no idea. We've done our best. You know, I guess that's the you know we've we've hustled and and. Uh, you know, the communication and have tried to communicate with our players uh, and their parents, uh, you know, to an nth degree. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Mike, kind of going back to the wide receiver discussion, you know, Coach Herman mentioned going into the bye week that receivers getting off of press coverage was something he felt, you know, really needed to, to happen, needed to be a focal point. Uh, from your standpoint, how much of getting off of press coverage is – I guess one, making sure that there's stuff on the call sheet to where you can scheme guys open, and two, maybe just guys, whether it's drill work in practice or on their own, just you know, not not just being physical, but working on technique to to get off jams and, and make sure that you know teams just constantly pressing you. Is it an issue? Yeah, you, you have to make sure that you're giving yourself enough one on one time. Uh, you know, when you're you're going against the DBs, and that's usually occurring on on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, where the you know O line and D line are going inside run, and then you guys go just one on ones. It's just the the corner and the and the wide receiver lined up, and it's always press, and you're working on you know getting off the ball, and you're working on your releases and your techniques. So that's important there. And then as coordinator, you have to make sure that you have. Um, you know, tools in the toolbox to help your guys free themselves up, you know, down the field, whether you do that through a motion and maybe create a stack, get a guy on the run, uh, move them from number one, to number two inside. And then also, you know, with our crossing package, you know, that we've run several times with underneath mesh routes and that sort of thing. Those are other things that that can help you out. But at the end of the day, there's going to be a time where you're going to want to just beat straight up press man and take in, you know, blow the top off the coverage and go. And, uh, you know, that's those are things that we're, we're going to work on on a daily basis. Time for the last three questions in queue. Start with Mike. Hey, Mike, um, you brought it up just a little while ago about players having to deal with injuries or part of the game. What is your message to some of the guys that are getting the opportunity to play, whether it's at the running back level where you've had injuries, the tight end position and the wide receiver position? What is your message to some of those other guys that are that probably weren't at the top of the depth chart, but now are making their way and getting yeah. their opportunity. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I mean, that's the biggest word that you said right there is what we say is opportunity. When any adversity hits, opportunity arises. So any adversity, you have opportunity. And so anytime there's an injury, there's a time and there's a place for somebody else to step up. And there's countless times throughout the history of through history of sport where you see an injury occur and somebody makes a career out of that injury, you know? And, and so whether it was Tom Brady at Michigan, when Drew Henson went down or whatever the case may be, it was blood. So who went down and he went in for, in the Patriots, whatever, that those are the, those are the opportunities that can happen. And we never want an injury ever or celebrate it. But what it is is an opportunity for somebody to step up and take advantage of that. So that's how you focus on it. That's the mental approach. Two last ones. Joe, go ahead. Coach, in the last five minutes of regulation in an overtime of conference games, Sam's yards per attempt is over eight. Uh, any other time in conference games, it's under five and a half. And I know situation obviously dictates that you'll have to try and score really quickly, but when you see that the offense in those situations works really well, how do you take those last five minutes in overtime and maybe take those principles throughout the rest of the game? That's a very good question. Um, I don't have a great answer for you on that, on that uh, particular uh, question. Um, I think, 
I think a lot of times you're, you're in a situation where you may be trying to jam the ball in and, and taking a, a risk where you would take a, a check down if it was normal situations. So, you know, a lot of times if you know you have to score and, and there's opportunities to go for it on, on third and long, you're going to you're going to try to rip in, a, you know, a tight window, whereas maybe you check it down in the first or second quarter or third quarter, whatever it may be. So um, I think the uh, the impact of the game and what's at stake sometimes can dictate the aggressiveness of your mentality throwing the ball down the field. Last one. Go ahead, Chip. Mike, you're you're almost halfway through the season. You're leading the nation in scoring 49.5 points per game. How would you rate the offense right now overall? And who are your, you know, vocal leaders who will get on other guys when there's a mistake? I'm not into rankings right now. I'm into beating Baylor. And um, where we're at offensively is there's a lot of room to grow. If we can eliminate mistakes, mistakes by myself, mistakes from our players, um, eliminate penalties, stay ahead of the chains, I got to do a better job on first down. And if we can do a good job of controlling what we can control, we have a chance to become a very good offense, very, very good offense. I'm not too concerned about telling you guys exactly what I think, you know, our grade is right now, but what it can be is a lot higher, a lot higher. And, and that's my responsibility. Um, leaders on offense. You know, I think, I think Ellinger, nobody, you know, everybody knows that one. Um, Sam Cosme's done a good job um, leading us up front. Junior's done a good job leading us up front. And then amongst the receivers, I've seen good things out of Josh Moore. I think the more he makes plays, the more vocal he's becoming. He's got a little bit of swagger to him, which is great to see. He's got some confidence. So I like, I like seeing him come along as well, you know, and um, you know, Kate Brewer is a guy that, you know, he just does everything right. And so he's a great example on the field of how to, you know, of how to be a role model on the field, you know, do what he does, even though he's been banged up, but you know, he's done a great job for us as well. So I think those guys have, have all contributed greatly to our offensive leadership.